they retreat, get a tactical stance, and immediately start shooting into the vehicle at Perry. Howdy, y'all. Hunky T here. Uh, this here video is from a couple years ago, but I think it's pretty relevant to what we've been talking about recently, about the kind of people that are out in the streets that probably shouldn't be. Um, but anywho, I tried a little something different in this here video, so <laughs> let me know what you think. Uh, yeah, anyway, enjoy the video. We want to give you an update on the details we know about the officer involved shooting last night. So let me let me point out what we started, where we were last night, and what we know today. The task force members found Francis Perry driving the vehicle on Cumbie Road. They knew he was a violent felon without a driver's license and a history of resisting arrest and fleeing to elude. We suspected that he may have dope. So the decision by the supervisor was, hey, it's afternoon drive time traffic, let's follow this guy until he stops someplace because if we light him up certainly he's going to flee and we're going to have a dangerous situation for the community. So they follow old Francis and he pulls into 2737 Golfview Street in Lakeland. Three detectives exit the vehicle after they park behind him and turn their lights on. One driver, one detective goes to the passenger side of the vehicle, one goes to the driver's side of the vehicle, and the third detective goes in front of the vehicle to take down a guy by the name of William Clue. William, as, as Francis is arriving in the car, William is walking down the driveway toward him. So our one detective is now in front of the car and William's on the ground. As William said later, I did what they told me. I got down on the ground. The detectives immediately tell him, let me see your hands, roll down the windows, open the doors because the, the windows on the side of the vehicle are very, very dark and they can just barely see in. Our detective in front of the car says he continues to do everything from show his hands to go to go down to the right side of his body. So he, he says this is over and over and over. William Clue, who turns out to be an, a pretty darn good witness for us, says in his estimation it was a minute to a minute and a half, maybe two minutes, that the detectives kept saying roll down the windows, open the door, roll down the windows, open the door, show us your hands, show us your hands. The only detective that has a good view into the vehicle is the one in the front and he says the guy alternately shows his hands and then goes down by his body. The detective on the passenger side of the vehicle retreats back to get what we call a hooligan tool out of the, out of the patrol vehicle in order to knock the windows, the side windshield, out of the vehicle. So as he's coming back with the hooligan tool, just as he prepares to hit the window to shatter the passenger side window, Clue goes back down to his right hand side, comes up with what we know now as a 9 millimeter Glock that's stolen, and begins to shoot at not only the detective with a hooligan tool, but the another, a fourth detective who's arrived. So Francis Perry is shooting at two of the detectives, and of course they retreat, get a tactical stance, and immediately start shooting into the vehicle at Perry we shot approximately 28 times before Perry quit the gunfight. We know that Perry shot at least five times at us and quite frankly 
I'm not sure how he missed the two detectives on the right side of the car. As soon as the fight is over and Perry quits shooting at us, we quit shooting at him. Detectives immediately pull him out of the car, have him down on the ground, and begin CPR and life-saving measures, calling EMS and fire rescue to help. It's important to understand these detectives from Haida, from a high-intensity drug trafficking area, experienced detectives were in a gunfight for their life last night, and they won. It was an incredibly dangerous situation. EMS arrives, they take him to the hospital. He undergoes emergency surgery, but quite frankly, there's no way to save Perry because he's full of holes. We shot him at least five times, maybe more. We'll have a better idea once the autopsy is completed today the emergency room surgeons gave an, uh, us an estimate of how many times he was shot. Just for clarity's sake here, this is not what you watch on television. On television you watch, you shoot one time, the guy goes down, he gives up. We know when Perry started shooting, he had the gun sideways when he started the fight and he shot at us at least five times and we shot at him four detectives shot a total of 28 times in a matter of seconds before the gunfight was over so now the gunfight's over let's tell you what we found in the in the vehicle first off we obviously found the suspects nine millimeter glock firearm that is stolen out of pasco county that investigation's ongoing it had one live round in the chamber, and the magazine otherwise was empty. We found two bags of methamphetamine laying in plain view on the back seat of the car, about six and a half ounces, probably about $4,500 street value. We found when we, when we pulled Perry out of the car that he had a nylon holster on his right side. He had the gun holstered and on him, and that's why when he went from hands up to the right side, he was going to the gun. Perry never, ever, ever communicated or said a word to us. He never made any effort to comply. All he had to do was comply. Just do what the detectives ask him to do. Well, let's talk about the choices he made yesterday. We didn't choose to shoot Francis Perry. He chose for us to shoot him. And we accommodated him. Here's what he knew, some of which we knew. He was driving yesterday afternoon without a driver's license. He was in possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. He was possessing a stolen firearm. He was in possession of a trafficking amount of methamphetamine, which he didn't even try to hide in the car. It was in plastic baggies just laying on the back seat. He was a fugitive from justice. He had an outstanding felony warrant with two felony charges. He's been out of prison only five and a half months. His fugitive from justice his outstanding VOP felony warrants were from not complying. Now, you would think a guy that just got out of prison five and a half months ago wouldn't be ready to go back to prison, would go along with what his probation officer said, but he didn't, and the warrants were outstanding. Francis Perry is a documented, pedigreed thug, and he has been his entire adult life. But let's talk about his first criminal charge when he was 10 years of age. The Winter Haven Police Department charged him with shoplifting. He was charged with his first weapons offense when he was 11 years old. 
he had an incredible juvenile arrest record where he was provided with programs and opportunities, but he ignored all that. When you look at his criminal arrest history, there's what you see. There's the guy that chose to shoot it out with the detectives last night. All right, now once again, I just got to pop in here and reiterate, like, why the hell are people like this in society? Why are they allowed to roam free? I don't understand. He's a bad man. And today he's a dead man. And he chose that. Oh, well, there you go, my friends. As you see, I tried a little something new on this here video. And as I look at it, I see how amateurish and stupid it looks. But, you know, what the hell. I just give her a shot. Like I say, try something new all the time. Anyways, I'm going to leave here for now. You check out up here. There's some video links and all that stuff. Anyways, y'all have a blessed day. You take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.